I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Today, we're going to review the latest release from an artist called Grouper. The album is titled The Man Who Died in His Boat. Um, interesting album title. The album cover, you know, it's this lady kind of looking uh, on and out of the scene, and, and you, you kind of don't know what to think when you, like... Is it her? I don't, I don't actually know. know. I, I don't know. know. If you guys I know, know that, please let I us know. I just thought of that. I don't yeah. know why I didn't question it. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect because I had heard about this album. I heard that, you know, Grouper was an artist that I need to check out since I kind of like indie, um, you know, singer-songwriter, noise, uh, Andy Ambient, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I was really excited when this came out and got good reviews. I was getting, I was hearing a lot of buzz about this album. Mm -hmm. um, so we put it on our list and gave it a few listens and I was just kind of blown away just listening to this casually in the background uh, about just how intriguing the sound is mm -hmm. um, you know here you have this really mystic acoustic guitar yet there's um, it's really atmospheric and, and you get you know it's just it's a mood bomb is what it is and, and I just got into it and so I suggested it's time that we review it and here we are so when we were put our reviewing lenses on though it's a whole different experience mm -hmm. right so the first thing that we have to do is dissect the sound the mm -hmm. first thing I noticed about this album time and, and jump in here whatever you want but the first thing I noticed is there's just the main instrument instruments are the acoustic guitar and the the ladies vocals mm -hmm. and and that if you strip down all the production take out every effect that was put on this all of the recording tricks and everything if she were to play this live mm -hmm. just her and acoustic guitar that's what it would be yeah um, now, what comes after that is there's other instruments. Occasionally you get some electric guitar with some distortion. Occasionally you get some piano. Um, it always sounds like she recorded in the next room. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, but really, it comes down to one simple production trick that maybe you can give us some background on, but yeah. it's reverb. Yeah, the reverb is it. I mean, that's that's the almost the main element of the music here. Right. You know, you mentioned the the vocals and and the the guitar, which is like the main instruments. That's absolutely yeah. true. But it's almost like the reverb overpowers those yeah. those things. Um, and generally, when I talk about reverb, I talk about it from a production and a presentation standpoint. It's something that an artist uses to make a song sound the way they want. After they've written the song, they've recorded the song. They say, oh, you know, this guitar, these vocals, whatever, sounds a little dry. Let's put some reverb on it, have it take up a little more space, give it a little more depth and a little more sustain, right? Well, I feel like she had to have had reverb in mind when she even wrote these songs. Yeah, I mean, the, the reverb in this case ceases to be just an, an afterthought. It ceases to be just a production element. It's a freaking instrument in right. itself. Yeah. I mean, I would have to imagine that it, if she produced this herself, which I would imagine is probably the case, uh, that she spent more time producing the reverb than she did the guitar or vocals. Right. Because it's all about that. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. And what it does is it gives that, that ambient... Mm -hmm. texture to it. I mean, it really does feel like you're listening to this in an in a, in adjacent room and yeah. she's playing off in the distance and stuff. So it gives it kind of this dreamy, like, otherworldly feel um, that that also just in combined with her, you know, just very airy vocals. I feel like that that kind of gives, gives it a very, I don't know, it gives it a very... Um, so what I'm looking for, just like a dark kind of yeah. creepy tone to it. Mm -hmm. you know, typically we like creepy music, which is why we got so so into this, but I just felt like the more we dug at this, the more we pulled it apart, I, I can tell you for a fact, it started to bother me that I noticed that a lot of the songs that feature acoustic guitar, and, and where you can actually hear a distinction in the mm -hmm. acoustic guitar melody she's playing, it sounds very similar. It's mm -hmm. the same chords, it's the same strum patterns. She might present her vocals slightly differently, but usually even the vocals are rather yeah. similar. So I feel like this album, you know, it's not a long album, mm -hmm. but does it justify its length? I don't really think so. I don't I think it justifies, you know, 38 plus minutes or however long this is. I think this is around 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Um, but but I don't feel like it really justifies this length because you have so, many, so much reproduction of sound. Mm -hmm. um, now, I like that at first because it was all about the mood, but once yeah. you start to get in it on a more analytical level, mm -hmm. it's harder to really justify some of it. Yeah, because you have to think about how that mood is being created. Yeah. And essentially, it's all mood is always going to be created by a combination of the songwriting, the performance, and the production. Yeah. And and so once you realize that all those elements are actually pretty similar throughout, it it, it takes some of the, the magic away, yeah. I would say. Now, there's two tracks in particular I'd like to point out because mm -hmm. I thought that they were excellent and did a good job of breaking the album up and giving mm -hmm. us some variety here. 
here. First of all, there's a nice intro track to the album yeah. uh, that sets up kind of the main chunk. Um, but then track seven, Vanishing Point, is really just this this old kind of out of tune piano, which I'm sure there's production on it, mm -hmm. um, that you know reverb and, and other things. But it, it really does sound like just this very creepy you know high piano keys yeah. that she's playing, and I really like that because it gave the, this album a new edge that uh -huh. really wasn't there before. Um, and then the closing track, Living Room. Yeah, I, I felt, love that track. I felt like that was just such an elegant closer. There's, um, it's it's much it's much more stripped down, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it kind of sums up the emotional appeal of the yeah. album. Well, and my favorite parts of the album, I, I think that was a track that that just also just had a killer vocal melody. Absolutely. And and I think that the first chunk of the album, yeah. uh, tracks one through four, uh, not well, not including track one because it's just the intro track right. really. Um, but tracks two through four have great melodies as well, and those all ended up being my track picks, mm -hmm. um, simply because those are the bits that I liked because I not only heard the atmosphere created by the reverb and production, but I also got some melody out of it. Yeah. Now, in that middle chunk of the album, it's like when it just dives right in. I yeah, think that absolutely. maybe that's when the guy dies in his boat, right? right. That's a good point. It really, it just feels like the whole thing goes underwater and it just feels like uh, it, it slips into this ambience that then it starts to pick up to the surface again once you get to the end of the album. And I think Living Room, the last track, is the perfect capstone for that reason because a lot of what comes before it, uh, while Towers and STS kind of, uh, they do feature vocals and guitar a little more, yeah. coming back into that last track, but it all builds back to it. So I feel like the, the album kind of kind of dips, not in quality, but just in, in mood and in... Um, in layers and melody and, and how the actual yeah. songwriting is happening. It dips in the middle there and then picks back up a bit and I like that format but then because of it I just ended up being pulled towards the songs that had the kind of songwriting that I like, where that melody is featured and I could kind of dig it out from sure. that thick reverb. And another aspect because of the reverb in production you really mm -hmm. can't hear any distinction in the lyrics, yeah. um, and, and I feel like you know, as you brought up, you know, what if this is when the guy you know died in his boat? And if you would have set up, even if you couldn't hear the lyrics more, uh, you could at least set this album up and frame it as a concept album. You know, something with the album cover, something with the track names, and then maybe work in disting distinguishable lyrics in there to help kind of back up that concept, mm -hmm. to give more context, to give more warrant around why the sound is the way it is, and actually place more value on it because. Because when you don't have that value there, you end up just having what you have, which is the music itself. That emotional mm -hmm. appeal isn't quite as strong. And honestly, this is all about emotional appeal, getting a mood kick from from the sound, and 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 that's what this is made for. It's more of an artistic statement mm -hmm. rather than an intricate piece of, of musical composition. Now, mm -hmm. I still found that I really like this. I started off in like mid '80s on this one, and the more I picked it apart, the more <coughs> I was just like, I can't, I don't, I I just can't get as much out of it anymore. So mm -hmm. I finally settled on a low 70 score, I'm going 72. Awesome. Yeah, I like this album too, and it was tough for me to come up with a score for it because it's like, I liked it overall, I always enjoyed listening to it, but nothing really pulled me yeah, in. It I works I, well as an album. Yeah, I didn't come away from it though really thinking, oh, I need to listen to that again, oh, here's what I really liked about it. It was just kind of like, eh, you know, I liked it, but, but eh, I probably won't come back to it. Yeah. Uh, it's still good though, I'm going to go 69. Cool. What did you guys think? Because a lot of you have talked about Grouper, and I was really excited to be able to review this one because it's a different album for us. Oh, definitely. A little bit off the beaten trail for, for Velocities of Music. So please leave us a comment at www.velocitiesofmusic.com or youtube.com slash Velocities of Music. As always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave us a comment letting us know what you guys would like to hear or see us review from 2013. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.